Well, milder temperatures will be moving in this week if you have any last minute shopping. Uh, but what about the chances for a white Christmas? Well, Bill's in next with your complete storm tracker forecast. Stay with us. All right, it's ongoing. The conjunction of 2020, the great conjunction of 2020, the grand conjunction. Um, that's it. What you're going to see when you go outside, it's not anything. I mean, it's not it's cool. It really is, but it's not something that's going to change your life. You're going to go outside and what it looks like is Jupiter and which is what you're seeing. Uh, Saturn is essentially just behind it to the left. For those with good eyesight, those of you who are under 50, uh, you can go out and likely see the two separate planets. For those of us who are a little bit older, it's gonna be just kind of a big bright blob. Not even, it's just gonna be a blob out there. If you go out with binoculars, even cooler, because you might be able to see the moons of, or at least a couple of moons of Jupiter going around it. Now, why does the conjunction happen? What's going on? Well, it's essentially part of the race that goes on celestially all the time. Uh, we'll see Jupiter and Saturn. They'll be together. It's the closest time from Earth that they have appeared since 1226. But you got to do it right after the newscast because by about 715, it's essentially done. And by 740, it's completely done because they will have set. Uh, they've gone down below the horizon at that point. But as we watch our planets going around the sun, it takes Jupiter about 12 years to make a revolution around the sun. It takes Saturn about 30. So essentially, it's racetracks. And so every 20 years, Jupiter catches up to Saturn. And where the positioning happens to be this time, makes the great conjunction that we are seeing. Sometimes they're spread this far apart for a conjunction. Other times it's, it's this far in the sky, but this time it's the width of your pinky uh, as you hold it out. And by the way, they are really 456 million miles apart, which if you want to stop and think about that, that's four times farther away than we are from the sun. So they're not really all that close. Anyway, in 2020, the solstice was today. The conjunction is today. What could possibly go wrong in 2020? Christmas Eve, rain to snow and accumulations of possibility. There could be some impacts on travel before it's all said and done. That front is pushing to the south. As it does so, the air behind it is cool. Uh, temperatures tomorrow will be essentially normal, so it's not bad. Uh, by the time we roll through tomorrow, we'll also watch some morning clouds giving way to increasing sunshine and less wind than today. I don't know about your house. The decorations at mine took a hit today with some of those 20 and 30 mile per hour gusts. Um, hopefully we'll get everything straightened back out a little bit later this evening. Rain's coming in here on Wednesday, but behind that front, this air is coming down from the Arctic and it will get colder. So what we're talking about Christmas Eve day, rain changing to snow, and that may happen fairly quickly. If you are headed east, again, you're more likely to encounter more snow, so travel issues could ensue if you are headed east on Christmas Eve and then Christmas Day itself. Hey, you are looking at some snow flurries. Temperatures still running in the 40s to around 50, 46 right now at the Bluegrass Airport with a southwest wind at 15. Oh yeah, and the solstice of today, our day, the shortest, nine hours, 31 minutes, 24 or 31 seconds, and we'll add two seconds tomorrow. By the way, text Kettle to 91999 to help out the Salvation Army Red Kettle campaign. 28 tonight, it's a brisk night, so head on out early to we'll get the conjunction. Mid 40s, your day tomorrow. Upper 50s, windy with rain arriving on Wednesday. Rain changes to snow Christmas Eve day and some snow flurries on Christmas itself. 